الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المختل ومن يذلل فلن تجد الله وللمرشدة وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن سيدنا وخبيبنا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما All praise due to Allah and after that all praise due to Allah we thank him we seek help from him we ask guidance in him and we seek forgiveness in him from our own evils and from our own bad deeds anyone who has been guided by Allah they are indeed guided and anyone who has been misguided by Allah you will never find a guardian to guide them I bear witness I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except for Allah the only one without partner and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a servant and his messenger to proceed forward Alhamdulillah, it's a, a, a pleasure to be back here in Malaysia. Uh, for some of you know, I used to give the khutbahs uh, back in, in the other masjid in the center for Malay world. And I want to start off this khutbah by, by just kind of making uh, just one, one thing, and those of you who know me, know that what I, what I do is I'm not a scholar, uh, but what I try to do is kind of look at things going on in my life, and really think about it from an Islamic perspective and just share those things with you. And so I'd like to be able to do that in this khutbah and hopefully you'll be able to benefit from it um, as well. So one of the things that's happened in the past, you know, a month or so um, is that there was an animated film that actually came out um, that, 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 uh, about a month ago or so recently and it was banned not only in Malaysia but other 14 other countries around the world. And it was, it was banned for a good reason. But I want to be, uh, uh, highlight on this, on this point um, of why this, this, this movie was banned and really talk about it hopefully inshallah from an Islamic perspective. Because I'm noticing more and more in Hollywood uh, movies, um, you know, and it's really no surprise that this is, this is happening, um, but, but you're, you're basically having now Hollywood movies, television shows, those type, uh, type of uh, venues that are, pro, uh, that are promoting a certain agenda. And they've done this for very, very many years. But this, in this particular case, you're being able to see this in our very in front of our very eyes. That this agenda is being is, is, is being promoted. Initially, you know, it used to be maybe regarding uh, uh, you know uh, sex or regarding drugs or those type of things. But now it's become very very uh, clear that it's regarding homosexuality. And so this is the topic, inshallah, that I wanted to, to, uh, to touch upon uh, 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 today. And it's important for us to be aware of this agenda. Aware of this, and it's an effort to be able to normalize uh, it, so that that our kids are eventually going to be saying to themselves, "Well, there's really nothing wrong with it." If you think that's you know there's something that's uh, that, that's there's really happening, it's happening within our schools right now. Uh, it's it's important for us to be able to uh, uh, speak out openly about the subject and let people know where Islam actually stands on this topic, where Islam actually stands on this topic. Um, and you know, I'll be honest with you, because this is a very sensitive area to, to touch upon. And to be honest with you, like I was nervous about uh, talking about this, but I think it's an important enough topic for us to, to speak about that it should be uh, conveyed. Uh, um, in fact, even in the U.S., when I was asked when I when, when I when I told them I was going to talk about this, uh, they were like, "Well, you know, maybe you shouldn't do that." I mean, that's that's the extent um, to what it's actually come to. Now. As we're doing this, it's important for us to begin to speak about this issue, right? And just like any other act um, that we have, um, which is going to be something that's bad or an evil act, we need to distinguish between the act itself and the person who's committing it. There has to be that distinction. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't punish us for any desires, any thoughts, or anything along those lines. It's the actual act itself that makes something, uh, uh, something right or something that's wrong. And it's not the human being that actually is wrong, it's actually the act that's, that's being put upon uh, by, by, you know, by, by that human being. And so it's not the person himself. But any uh, type of injustice or any type of discrimination or act that's done on any group of people, right, anywhere in the world, it is our duty as Muslims to be able to stand up for them. Whether or not uh, uh, you agree with whatever they're doing, it's, it's, a, it's a basic uh, human right, uh, an Islamic right to be able to have the freedom of life. Uh, yeah, within, within, our, within our religion. 
But still, it leaves us with the question about our stance as to what we should be, what we should be saying, how should we should be behaving when it comes to the act itself of homosexuality, right? And again, let's be clear about, um, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were against these acts. This is not any debate um, that's actually out there. But it's, but again, I want to emphasize that I said the act of homosexuality. It's very very important to be able to make that distinction that we are not sinful in anything that we do, right, until we actually act upon whatever it is. So imagine somebody who has a desire to drink. Are they sinful? As in, imagine somebody who has a desire to be able to go out there and steal something. Or just think about it. Oh, you know there's a, 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 a 20 ringgits that's sitting on the bench. Maybe I should just take it and put it in my pocket. Are they sinful for just thinking that? No. But it's the act of actually doing it, the act of drinking, the act of stealing, the act of lying, those are the types of things that make us uh, um, uh, make it punishable for us to be able to do that. On the contrary, uh, when you have an evil desire and you don't act upon it because you know and you have uh, fear of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that actually becomes a reward for you. And that's a very very important point to be able to keep in mind. So now that being said, you know whenever we think about homosexuality, there's always one particular story that comes about in the Quran. And everybody's familiar with the story, but I just want to highlight uh, a couple of things on it. And this is the story of Lut. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions in the Quran uh, in, in, in Surah number 26. And I'm going to tell you the, um, uh, the verses. But uh, he says, the people of Lut denied the messengers when their brother Lut said to them, will you not fear Allah and obey him? <clears throat> Verily, I am a trustworthy messenger to you. So fear Allah, keep your duty to him and obey me. No reward do I ask you for it. My reward is only from the Lord of the worlds. Go you into, go you in unto males of the of the alami, the mankind, and leave those whom Allah has created for you to be your wives. Nay, you are transgressing people. They said, if you cease not Yalut, verily you will be one of those who is driven out. And then he said, this is Lutz speaking. He said, I am indeed of those who disapprove with severe anger and fury your uh, action that you've done, sodomy. My Lord, save me and my family from what they do. So we save him and his family, all except an old woman among those who remain behind. So this is kind of the, this is one, ask, one area in the Quran that the story is actually mentioned. And it's important for us to be able to examine the, the story of Lut to kind of really assess where um, our stance really comes from. And so again, right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the story does not punish the people of Lut because of their desires. Again, I'm, I'm emphasizing this point. But there's three things that we can learn from, this, from the story that we have. Number one, acting upon it, right? I am indeed of those who disapprove with severe anger and fury, your action. This is what Lut is saying to the people. Right? I'm opposed to whatever you're doing because you're doing it, not because you're thinking about it. And that's number one. Number two is being arrogant in the sin that, we have, in, that you have. Verily by your life, uh, uh, O Muhammad, in their wild intoxication, they were, they, they, they were wandering blindly. Meaning that not only are you doing the sin, but, but you're being arrogant about it. You're thinking that there won't be a punishment for you on the Day of Judgment. There is no Akhara for you to, live, uh, to, to go to. So when you become arrogant, you begin to do the sins that are very, very easy for you to do. You don't think about the consequences of it for, from, from, from any different way in the, in the Akhira. And so that's number two that they were doing. Number three, it was trying, they were trying to force it upon other people. They were trying to force it upon other people. People of the city said to, uh, to Lutz that they, did we not forbid you to entertain or protect any of the people uh, from us? Right? Now this is the people telling, telling Lutz that if you bring somebody from the outside into the city, then don't protect them against what we're about to do to them. Again, they're asking, uh, uh, they're telling Lut that, that basically that you know, uh, we're going to do it and, and, uh, and we want you to accept whatever it is that we're doing. We want you to accept whatever it is that we're doing. And this, in this day and age, this is exactly the message that we have from the LGBT community or the movement itself. Right? They are basically acting upon whatever it is, but not only that, they're being arrogant about it without any consequence of the hereafter. But lastly, what they want us to do is accept whatever it is that they're doing. Accept whatever it is that they're doing, and that's when we have to be able to stand up and say, no, we, we have clear directions from our sunnah and our, in the Qur'an that actually tell us this is, this is, this is, some, some, this is like a, 
uh, an abhorrence for mankind. This is not something that should be accepted and we should never be able to do this. But our responsibility is to do that. And I know, I know maybe in, the, in Malaysia it's maybe you know, a lot easier. But we have to be able to stand up against it because there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where Adi al-Kindi reported uh, on, on, on the authority of, of the Messenger of Allah who said, Verily, Allah the Exalted will not punish a community of, of, for the sins of a few unless they see evil appear among themselves and they're and they are able to reject it but do not. They're able to reject that but they don't do it. If they don't do so, then Allah will punish the entire community along with the sinners. So now, if we are accepting of the sins that are happening, no matter what those sins are, and we're not standing up against it, whether with our tongues, whether with our hands, or even within our hearts, something that we say, you know what, this is something that's loath. We don't like whatever's going on. Even if we don't do that, then we're just as susceptible for the punishment of Allah than everybody else that's out there. And that's the danger part of being able to just let, let it go. That's the danger of just letting sins occur without us doing anything about it. And so uh, we ask Allah SWT to protect us from the evils in our own society and give us the strength to be able to act uh, uh, against them either by our hands or by our tongues or in the, le <coughs> or in the least in our hearts as the Prophet ﷺ has taught us to do. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَسَرْفِنَا وَلِكُمْ وَسَرْفِنَا الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. You know, unlike in former times, uh, um, the act of homosexuality has become a quote unquote normalized within our society. Whether it be TV shows, whether it be movies or those type of things, they're they're now more and more they're just being shown randomly without even maybe even having a storyline uh, uh, behind them. And what it does, it makes us desensitized to the actual act itself. This is a slow, like a drip, uh, uh, a marketing they call it, or drip, uh, 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 dripping that they're doing, so that over time this becomes something that just becomes uh, uh, part of a uh, 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 society. And if you don't think that's true, think about this for a second. In our parents' generation, whenever we were watching, whenever they were watching films or watching movies or watching TV shows, and there was just a, a, a simple kiss on the television, they would turn their eyes away. And now, what do we do? We don't even do anything at all. Let's forget about the kissing, there's much more that we actually basically just look at the screen without turning our eyes away. And that's because of our desensitization. And that's an agenda that people have to be able to make us desensitized to the same issue as well when it comes to homosexuality. And we need to be able to stand up for it because we know this is something that is not acceptable to Allah SWT. And I'd like to again uh, 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 emphasize, right, is the act of homosexuality itself. And unfortunately, you know, many places in the world, um, uh, people condemn people for whatever it is that they're doing. And that is not um, our way, right? Our way is, if, if you look at the stories in the Quran, right? Whenever something happens, it was the, 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 the blame is, oh, shaitan made me do it. It's not the person that's blamed, it's the act, or shaitan is blamed. It's not the person itself. Um, when you look at Ta'if, for example, imagine if the Prophet ﷺ would have blamed the people of Ta'if for uh, ridiculing him and, and throwing him out of the city. But no, he said the act of what they did was wrong, and I know that future generations will do something that's better. And that's exactly what happened. Look at Adam ﷺ, right? Is when he ate from, uh, from, from that tree, if Allah SWT would have blamed Adam for it, we wouldn't even be here in, uh, 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 in existence. But no, he blamed the act, and so when Adam repented for that act, Allah SWT forgave him. So again, it's important even for us to realize, if we see within, even no matter what it is, in our children, in our spouses, anything else, when somebody does something wrong, right, do not blame the person. Do not blame the person, they're not uh, fundamentally wrong. They're not, they don't have something within the heart that's corrupt. That's a Christian theology. That's not a Muslim theology. Muslim theology is that we, that, that as, as human beings, we are pure. But we get tempted, and after that temptation, we have to have tawbah of, to Allah SWT. That is, our, uh, that is our creed. And so we have to be very, very clear uh, about that. So this idea of, uh, of condemning an act, right, um, uh, uh, is, is something that we have to uh, generally keep in mind. That it's something that's a, it's a Christian theology, and it's not within ourselves as well. But this movement is very, very powerful. 
It's confusing even the best of us. And worse, what it's doing is it's influencing us to slowly accept whatever that they're doing is something that's acceptable, it's okay, and, 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 they, and more importantly, um, we're getting that feeling that they have a right to do whatever they want. Right? It's not harming me anything, that they can do whatever they want. And if this is something that we have to be aware that it's something intentional, and it's trying to move society towards accepting it, normalizing it, and those type of things. So we need to be aware of this and stand up against it and tell, more importantly, our children about exactly what is happening. Right? Speak to them about uh, what it, why is it that we're not watching particular movies uh, or those, those type of things because of this, of whatever's going on. We need to keep abreast of what's happening in their schools. Um, that's being taught in schools. What films are they watching? What TV shows? And also nowadays, what videos they're seeing on social media that may be influencing them in the same way as well. And we don't, you know, our, our, sometimes our natural tendency is to say just, just don't do it. That's it. Just basically, just listen to whatever I have to say. But that's not doesn't work in the, in, the, in in our in our current times. We have to be able to give them valid arguments because the valid arguments from their perspective is being given on the other side. And if we basically they're giving the valid arguments and we're just telling them no 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 just be quiet and just listen to your parents, right? That's naturally going to move them towards that argument of something that's acceptable than something that's rather not. And I know, uh, um, and I'm speaking about this and saying that maybe in Malaysia we're a little bit more sheltered than other places in the world. But what happens when our kids go abroad to study? Right? What happens when our kids go abroad to study? Or when they begin to work in multinational corporations? Because that, this issue is going to come up. And so if they're not prepared with sound arguments that we're telling them about how to deal with this issue, they're going to be just basically thinking everything's normal. And uh, you know, as long as I'm not the one doing it, I'm not the one committing the sin, then I, it's, everything is okay with that. And that's not uh, um, how we need to be able to do this. Now lastly, I wanted to finish off, inshallah, with one last argument that, that, that's being used um, um, in, 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 in this justification, and that homosexuality is within the genes. It's something that you're naturally born with, and so that's why it's something that's acceptable. That's, that's a common uh, um, theme regarding that. And the people are born with it, and it's something that, that's okay. And that's true, maybe, right? But there are other things that are the same way, right? Alcoholism is the same thing as, 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 uh, 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 in, in that sense where now science has proved that alcoholism is a disease that you have, that is, you're born with. But that doesn't mean an alcohol is going to go around and tell everybody to, that it's okay to drink, and then actually force it upon you. That doesn't happen. So why do we accept it uh, on, 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 the, on the homosexuality side as well? And then again, in this, in the, in this idea, um, the, um, is, is, is this, this, this idea of a test from Allah SWT. Right? That Allah SWT tests us with what we can bear. And so he says, and surely, in the Quran, Allah SWT mentions in translation, he says, and surely we shall try you uh, uh, until we test those uh, who strive hard and are a sabirin and are the patient. And we shall test you with uh, um, uh, uh, the facts, which means the one who's a liar and the one who is truthful. So the temptation in and of itself is a test. That doesn't mean you're, you know, you're not born with it. You could be born with something, and because of that, Allah SWT is, 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 is making it so that that's a temptation for you, but we have to be strong enough to be able to resist that temptation. That is our responsibility as Muslims. So imagine, if you're telling me it's a temptation, imagine the 45-year-old man who has never been married, because for whatever reason he wasn't able to. Don't you think he has a desire to go out there and commit a sexual act outside of marriage? And yet, He's not doing it, and because he's not doing it, he's being rewarded by Allah SWT. Why is that any different, for example, than from a person, a Muslim, a striving Muslim, who maybe has the same, maybe, uh, you know, same-sex attraction, but is refusing to, 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 to give in to it, because he knows and he fears Allah SWT. Right? That is something that we have to be empathetic toward. There are Muslims that are out there, that are facing this issue, and they're being strong about it. Right? They're making, they're, they're making Tawbah, and they're trying to ask Allah SWT to give them strength. And we need to be empathetic towards these people, because there is a movement like that that's out there. We need to be empathetic towards them and be able to help them in any way we can. Encouraging them to be stronger, all of those different types of things. Just like we do with all other types of sins as well. If somebody is trying to resist the temptation, right? Isn't, aren't we, as a community, going to be help that person? Obviously then the same thing happens in this particular case, but rather what happens is 
just for mentioning this idea that you might have a temptation, they get ostracized. And then when they got ostracized, that's a basically cycle down a hole which they might not be able to get out of. Right? Because there's going to be another community out there that's not going to ostracize them. That's going to tell them they're normal. It's okay. Everything's going to be okay. You're okay. I'm okay. Everything's going to be okay. So would you rather take that okay? Or would you be like, you know, I'm, I got cut off from my parents. I don't have, have access to my children. All of those different types of things. So again, we need to be of those people that are empathetic um, towards this movement and really help them as much as we can um, to be able to be strong and inshallah make dua for them that Allah SWT will reward them just like Allah SWT rewards all the Muslims um, that are out there. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adabana. Rabbana la tuakhidna in nasina o akhtabna. Rabbana wa la tuhmil alayna islam kama hamantahu ala ladini min qabdina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bih. Wa'fu anna wa fir lana wa rahamna. Anta maulana fansurna ala qom al kafirin. اللهم إنك عفو وان تحب العفو فاعف أنا اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها من تخير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين كأنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين كأنك حميد مجيد وأقيم الصلاة